It always blows my mind when I read stats like the average home buyer interviews less than one agent before making their decision as to who to hire. Well, maybe that's because you don't know the right questions to be asking, and we are gonna solve that on this video, and we're gonna start right now. Hey, what's going on? This is Hans Strazina with the Gunnerman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're here, you want to learn how to succeed and win in the East Bay market. Because on this channel, we talk about tips, tricks, ideas, uh, anecdotes, stats from the market that I'm seeing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And I try and share that with you so you can be successful when it comes to your home buying or selling experience. When you get some value out of this, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, because I'm gonna continue to put out weekly content every Friday just like this, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So today's topic, what we're talking about, is five questions that you need to be asking your agent before making that decision to work with them. Now, as I said in that intro, uh, it's not true that they, the average person interviews less than one agent, but there's a lot of people who don't even interview anyone at all. They just make a phone call, sign a document, done, right? And especially at the price points that I see and the amount of money and the amount on the line, uh, it kind of boggles my mind that people don't interview two, three, four agents, because generally when you get surgery, you hire an attorney, you get second and third opinions. And to me, when there's millions of dollars on the line and you're in the price points that require to win in this marketplace, uh, you should be asking a few extra questions at the very least. Even if you just have a more intelligent conversation with your first choice, uh, this video will really, really help. So without any further ado, let's get into the five questions. Question number one is, have you ever released or lost somebody's deposit? Uh, now this is really important because as a buyer, you're required to put an earnest money deposit into escrow as soon as you ratify that contract. You're very excited, you got the offer accepted, now you put 20, 30, 40, 50, sometimes $100,000 on the line that the seller can take if you don't perform for some reason. There's a variety of reasons that deposits can be at risk, um, but in general, what you need to find out is, does your realtor take that seriously? And do they mitigate your risk against losing your deposit, against having the seller go after it, uh, against having it litigated against, and there being liquidated damages, and some of these other things that are involved with taking a deposit. Admittedly, it's not as simple as like, you don't perform, you get the deposit, but you need to understand your realtor's track record with that particular topic. Ideally, you wanna hear that they've never lost or released a deposit, uh, and if an escrow was canceled for whatever reason, they fought to keep all or as much as the, of the deposit as possible. So uh, make sure you're asking that question so you know where they're coming from on that front. As a follow-up question, you can ask them, have you ever had a client go into litigation of any kind, even a mediation, relative to the contract they wrote and see what they say? The second question I would always ask, especially on the buy side, but this is an interesting one for the sell side too, is on average, how many offers does your average client write? This will tell you two things. Number one, are they keeping track of their stats? Do they know their numbers simply? Or are they just kind of winging it, right? That will tell you something right there as to is that a good fit for you? But it will also tell you, um, since they, if they know their stats and they're at three or they're at five or they're at 10, you can say, okay, well, why is it that number? And what is normal? What is average? What are you seeing uh, out there? Um, you might wanna do that research on your own books before you ask them but you can compare that against what you've heard out in the, in the marketplace. Admittedly, this is hard data to aggregate, but in general, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are writing five to 10 offers. You know, seven, eight, nine offers is not uncommon when I talk to people at open houses, and it's a, there's a lot of buyer fatigue, there's a lot of missed opportunities potentially in there. So uh, if you hear someone who's writing an average of three offers or four offers, you know you might have somebody who has a strategy or has a, a handle on how to succeed in this market that is better than average, right? And so you wanna dig in on that as to why. If, if they tell you that their average client writes 12 offers, well, there might be a reason for that. So uh, make sure you dig in and find out what those numbers are because it will tell you a lot about their process and their grasp on how to succeed in the market. This is an interesting one and having uh, actually never been asked this in person but having uh, thought about this myself a lot, uh, this is a question that I would ask if I was interviewing someone which is what is an area professionally that you're not very good at that you're working on to actively improve? It's less about what the actual answer is and more about how introspective and humble they are to tell you something that they're not working on. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I honestly get a really focused on a lot of details and I sometimes miss the bigger picture and I really am trying to like 
figure out how to let go of some of the small details as needed or vice versa. It's like, I don't focus on the details and I'm really trying to um, focus in on something. Whatever that answer is, it will, it will tell you a couple things about, is that a person you wanna work with? Are they introspective? Are they self-aware enough? And do they have the humility to share that with you? Um, because that relationship you're forming is going to be um, one that you wanna make sure you like this person. You like the way they operate, their ethics, their ethos, etc. because you're gonna get a little intimate and personal. You're gonna get to know this person and you wanna make sure that this is someone you can engage with and you can enjoy being around. Another interesting question that gets asked from time to time, especially in listing presentations, but I think you should ask every single time is, uh, what is one quality about some of your competitive realtors that you really admire? Or what's something you really respect about other uh, competition in the industry? If you've interviewed more than one people, you can throw a name out and say, what do you respect about so-and-so, right? Um, and see what they say. One, it'll it'll tell you, are they aware? Do, have they dealt with people, other agents who are popular in that territory? Do they know those people well enough? Do they have personal relationships with them? Or have they at least come across them in transactions or on broker's tour, right? Um, it will also tell you uh, how humble they are and how aware they are. They're not the only show in town. Everyone wants to tell you how great they are. And that's the whole point. They're trying to close you on using them as your agent, right? Um, however, if they can tell you something positive about some other agents in town, it gives them a self-awareness. Again, it shows some humility and it shows you that they're awake at the wheel. They know what's going on. They know who their good competition is and who isn't. And they have a, an awareness of where they stack up in that, in that rank. So it can give you a good sense of um, how in that community they are and, uh, and well liked or not or whatever, right? So you're really looking for that personality fit with that question. This last question I think is really important, especially as we head into the holiday season, November, December, and the early part of January. Um, the question is how many deals a year on average do you do off market or what percentage of your deals are done off market um, because as we move into like I said the holidays in the early part of the year uh, those off market opportunities come up more and more and more and that's there's a lot of variety of reasons for that and I did a video on off markets and pocket listings I'll link to it up here um, but what you really are looking for is how plugged into that community are they? Do they know the prime listing agents? Are they getting in front of those opportunities on your behalf uh, so that you can go in and take a look at them if there is a pocket listing or if there is an off-market opportunity so you're making sure you're seeing everything you possibly can see? Um, on average, I would say if someone's doing 10 to 20% off-market, that's really solid. Much more than that um, would be an you would want to know why, but um, generally speaking on a yearly basis, if someone's in that kind of 15, 10, 15, 20%, I would say that's really, really solid. If they're doing zero off market, it's not necessarily a problem, uh, but it's something that you need to uh, dig in on and understand why they don't do it that way and understand how they feel about off markets. Uh, can they find them for you? Is that important to you? Is that important to them? Is that something that, that matters, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, just make sure you ask the question and then listen intently and ask follow-up questions as to why once you get those answers. So hopefully you got some value out of that. As you can tell, this process is going to try and get a little personal. You want to find out who that person is because at the end of the day, everyone will tell you they're number one. Everyone will tell you their customer service, white glove this, uh, top rated that, platinum this, etc. right? And what you really want to know is, can you connect with that person? Can they deliver the goods better than you could by yourself or better than your next best option? And then ultimately, you're going to have a good time doing it with them. Is this someone you can trust? Is this someone who can uh, get it done for you? You don't have to worry and sweat the little details. They got it. Um, and are they going to get you in front of all the opportunities that are possible that would fit your criteria, right? So uh, at the end of the day, you have to judge that character for yourself. But if you ask at least those five questions, I'm sure there are many more that you could ask, but if you get to those five, every time I've been asked those, I always respect that person more because they're really digging in to find out, is this a good fit? And ultimately, it's a two-way street. You want to make sure it fits both ways, but ultimately it's your purchase. It's your home. It's got to work for you. Since you got some value out of that, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna continue to put out weekly content just like this to help you in your East Bay real estate experience every single Friday and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So without any further ado, my name is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International, signing off for now. See you on the next one.